Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a Ubisoft News Play stream of Assassin's Creed Valhalla gameplay. I am one of your hosts, Chris Waters. I am Yusuf Magid, and as Chris said, we have a very special dream as stream. Uh, as you can see, we are also joined by Jessica Marr here, game designer on Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Jessica, how are you doing? Uh, really, really well. Super excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Heck yeah. Thanks for get, getting in this boat. What are we doing, Yusuf? What's happening? All right, so Chris, we're looking at my gameplay here, and uh, I got some hands-on time with Valhalla recently. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first thing we're starting off here is a riverside raid of a monastery. Excellent. And uh, I like you just blowing the horn straight up. I mean, a raid is not a subtle affair, right, Jess? Like, that, people know you're coming. You're getting into it. Yeah, like definitely if you take this course uh, of action, if you blow the horn, you'll hear the bells, everybody knows you're coming. Um, but there's also an option for you to be able to stealthily, I guess, uh, scout out the location before your allies come barging in. In this case, less subtle, but there is an option. <laughs> <laughs> less subtle, the bowmen I, are waiting at the gates. I have been called gates. many things in my, <laughs> my Assassin's Creed playing days. <laughs> subtle has rarely ever been one. <laughs> Excellent. So, yeah, folks, what you're seeing here is footage taken from a work-in-progress build. Uh, the game is out in four weeks, uh, but right now this is footage we pre-recorded from a work-in-progress build, and we selected some scenes to show off different parts of the gameplay and uh, give you a deeper look at what's in store for you when Valhalla comes out. So, Jess, we're in the middle of combat here, and uh, as a game designer, combat was kind of in your purview, is that correct? Yep, so uh, I wasn't directly involved in the designs of the fight. However, I did assist when it came to the experience of the user interface. And fight was something that was really important uh, to the devs. We really wanted to step up once again uh, our fight and make it really feel uh, crunchy, visceral, and part of that Viking fantasy. So for sure, a lot of attention put into this. And Yusuf, what kind of weapons are you working with here? Yeah, so I'm here. I'm, I'm rolling with a one-handed axe and shield. Um, obviously, you'll see us. Uh, like you'll, you'll see me switch weapons uh, quite a bit throughout the demo. Uh, dual dual uh, wielding axes, dual wielding shields at one point. I'm sorry to uh, go right with now. the two-handed like battle axe. Cross the battlefield and stomp someone's head in. <laughs> oh yeah. So yeah, you, like, if you see, there's like two bars there, Chris, over a person, uh, and if you drain the one of them, which is like their stamina, you'll knock them down. Uh, and if that happens, you can uh, you can stomp on them or uh, execute like a uh, like a finishing strike on them. Nice. That's right. Yeah, and uh, there's a couple ways you can do this too. I think you can use it for weak points with your bow. You can diminish their um, defense by parrying attacks. There's a couple ways to do this, and with stomping, it's a main skill that you get in the skill tree. So you opt into this one. Help me out here. Nice. And now it's time to loot. I mean, that's part of the whole deal with a raid, right? You gotta get the boot. That's why you're here. That's definitely why you're here. Bring it back to the settlement, build some new things, perhaps a tattoo shop or uh, something to enhance your Drakkar or change its uh, appearance. There's so many things you can do with the loot you find in raids. Now, you just said the Drakkar. So in this case, we got raw material, materials. Right? Word of our growing settlement has reached the Drakkar's Yeah, raw seeds. materials. So okay. have a look around. The Drakkar is what you call the, the longboat, is. is that correct? Yes, yeah, that's right. I want to see okay, the just getting the terms man. down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, Yusuf, what were you going to say? I was going to say, so in this case, we got raw materials and supplies. Now, what, what exactly are, are we going to use those for? Tell me more about right, so those are um, like to join resources for your settlement, mainly. So what you do there Iran, is, uh, when you arrive, of course, your settlement is not built. Uh, you're kind of building yourself in this land, and in order to create services or to have uh, places for your new allies or uh, people who came with you from Norway to England for them to stay, you need to use these resources. Uh, so they're really made to build, and you can build at any order you like. Uh, so if you waiting. really, really want to have tattoos immediately, <laughs> you can start with that. Uh, but there's a few things that you, um, like there's an order of things, but in general it's up to you to pick. And as you gain red, uh, renown, uh, more opportunities are available. So um, yeah, lots to do with resources in this element. So many things to build. Nice. Got it. And Yusuf, I see here you are rocking the dual shields. Is that what, what I'm seeing? I, I do have the dual shield. We'll see some dual shield fighting in a bit. Uh, <laughs> oh, really? But that, that last scene. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, excited. 
Uh, so here we got, uh, we're, we're going to uh, sort of win over uh, the land of Lettershestershire, and um, we're told to meet up with the, the Ragnarsons. So this is Ivar Ragnarsson, and we'll, we'll meet his brother, and then uh, Eivor's brother Sigurd is already with them. That's right. Uh, what is happening here? This doesn't seem like a sanitary situation. Oh, he's very friendly, you'll see. All spies. <laughs> Uh, and folks, you, uh, you, as you know, you can play as male or female Eivor, and uh, we'll be switching throughout the footage uh, to give you a look at both of those characters models in, uh, in cutscenes and in action. Yeah, we've already been switching a little bit. Yikes. Oh, no. No. This is such a great introduction. Not my thing. So Jessica, uh, Viking torture methods, was this part of your uh, your design process? Like really get into what kind of gross <laughs> stuff they did to each other. <laughs> oh yeah, every morning before going to work, I just rewatch this scene. Uh, it really inspires me. No, <laughs> um, Ivar is a particular kind of character. Uh, he's very unique in his approach. Uh, you could tell his values are a bit more uh, primal, uh, very um, visceral in general. So he's definitely uh, one of those unique um, people you'll get to meet along your journey. Excellent. Doesn't yeah. seem too fond of Saxons. I'll say that. He has, you know, he finds benefits in either Saxons oh, and Danes. Easy. This guy didn't seem to be very uh, useful to him, so <laughs> we'll see what he thinks about other ones. But uh, yeah, he's smart, though. I'll give him that. You'll get to see a bit about uh, how he thinks. Uh, but he has a twist, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and so this is one of the, the Ragnar sons in this Sons of Ragnar quest. And Yusuf, this is a, this is a quest to kind of like build up your influence in the region and kind of like start like you're not just fortifying your settlement and your place by through resources and through combat, but also through alliances. Yeah, exactly. Like I think you know, there's this idea that Vikings are all raiders and you know warriors and and take everything they want through force. Um, but like the actual truth of it was that there was a lot of like deal, deal making and, and diplomacy going on. Um, and so in this case, um, the current king of uh, of Mercia is someone named Burgred who hates the Danes and. Um, you know, Eivor and uh, Sigurd and the Sons of Ragnar want to install their own king who's, uh, who can rule over Danes and Saxons alike. And so that's sort of what this mission quest is, is, you know, dethroning the, the current king uh, and creating a peaceful transition of power to the next one. So it has to be peaceful. I'd gouge out your tongue and shove it up your ass. Classic Ivar. Now fuck off. <laughs> So now we're like jumping ahead a little bit in the quest to get to a different point to show you folks. Uh, set us up here, Yusuf. What, who are, now what's, what kind of machinations are in, in play? Right. So yeah, you got Sigurd there on the left. That's Eivor's brother. Uh, and then you have Uba there, who's Ivor's brother. So you got, you got two sets of siblings here. And um, we're going to meet the, the king that they want to install on the Mercian throne here. Uh, a, a man named Cheowulf here. Our dear Thane Cheowulf here. Oh, there he is. What's it's up, buddy? Perfect I timing. For, but it's what <laughs> oh, yeah. needs just now. Heavy on the I'm furs. You know, it gets chilly Saxons out there. <laughs> Very noble. <laughs> Excellent. And so now while we're interrogating this guy a little bit, uh, Jess, can you tell us a little bit more about sort of what your, uh, like what kind of stuff you specialized in on the team? What kind of uh, elements of the game design one. were your focus? I hope you have come. Sure. So um, my we're main focuses were user experience yeah. and user interface, meaning next. that uh, each mechanic that needed, you know, some user peace. interface for support or Jail to explain or tutorialize, to uh, I might have participated in that. And uh, otherwise, so now, uh, everything for accessibility, which um, there's a great point a uh, in the demo. I don't think we'll be covering it, but soon there shall be more information available. So for those that are there for this, I'm really excited for you guys to see what we've done and looking forward to your feedback. Now we back oh, absolutely. And if you folks are curious about accessibility options, you know, that doesn't just include stuff like, uh, you know, customizing the subtitles, changing the kind of, uh, you know, for color blindness, changing the color of the UI. It includes a whole raft of things. And what I'm going to do is in the Twitch chat right now, 
I'm going to put a link to more information about accessibility in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Tons of settings in there that all players are going to like want to get a little bit of, you know, whether it's customizing your HUD or, uh, you know, customizing your control input. A lot of great stuff there. So go check it, that link out in the Twitch chat, or if you're watching on YouTube, just go over to news.ubisoft.com. You can find more information there. Well said, Chris. Uh, so what they've been talking about here is uh, Che Wolf basically says that, hey, if, if we want right this to be a, uh, a transition of power where the, the Saxons in Mercia and the Danes in, of Mercia will follow me uh, and believe in my uh, believe in my rule, then this needs to be a peaceful transition of power. Burgard has to essentially, you know, almost willingly give this up or else people won't won't follow me. And so we can't just go and murder Burger in, in cold blood and steal his crown and say, okay, here, Che Wolf, you take it. Now, when you say peaceful transition of power, I mean, like, not going to be a regicide involved, but... Yeah, yeah, more like a forced retirement. <laughs> yeah. There might be a threat in there, you know. <laughs> just a little bit, just a little, you know. <laughs> just a push. <laughs> you never said this one was a poet. Oh, uh, you're I a poet. This. And so is I Ivar, of course. Camp just north of Tamworth. <laughs> Will you go with us? You'll be able to find quite a few people who are um, quick-witted in this game, with the flitting especially. My god, real poets go. in there. Oh yeah, we have some flighting coming on a little bit later, and it's, it's one of my right. favorite things to do. Same. Exactly. I've really grown to enjoy the challenge. It's, it's really something that grows on you. It's so creative. That for you folks, you're going to see it in a little bit here during our stream. It's uh, more of a verbal sparring than sword or shield combat. But uh, here we are starting the Leicestershire. Did I say that right? Leicestershire. Leicestershire. <laughs> Man, I got to get my pronunciations down. All right, so we're jumping forward a little bit. Yusuf, tell us where we're at here. Yeah, so so now uh, you know we we're exploring a bit of the open world, checking out some of the the side activities um, in the world that that you can discover. Um, we're all we're still in the region of Leicestershire. Um, that's where the the whole demo takes place. Yeah, just um, rolls so off just hung, man, you got it down. Uh, I mean, that's that's what happens when you when you play a game for uh, you know <laughs> multiple hours. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But yeah, this is actually this is one of my favorite sequences here. Um, there was like a there was a, an item uh, on the top of these rooms that I was trying to get to, and then I get up here and I, I find a giant enemy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice! Dude, he just beamed you just... in a barrel, and he threw you off. Oh, and he me and threw me off. Yeah, instant death. Uh, no way! Oh Dude, wow! You yeah. so oh, hard. oh, but wait. Okay, so I reloaded, <laughs> and I was like, all right, you know what? I'm gonna get him back. I'm gonna get him back. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. Oh man. Wow. I mean, it, honestly, There's so at first, many great archetypes. <laughs> it's like a bear of a man. I mean, good. So I take Lord. out one. Goliath. I mean, that's a fitting name. All right. All right. So I, I, yeah, I gotta again. be quick this time. Smash in the nice. barrel. That's good. Goliath is turtling up. Ooh, coming for okay. it. Now here we go, Chris. This is this is the part I was waiting for. Oh, sweet revenge! He's not the only one that can throw himself <laughs> off. What a finish. I mean, well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh. uh, but yeah, that was one of the combat abilities that um, you you see there uh, on the bottom right. Uh, there are four mapped um, to the face buttons, like a, uh, like you might remember in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Um, and then once you have a bar of adrenaline, uh, which is in the, the bottom uh, left corner there, uh, you can you can activate your abilities. Exactly. So was that was that exactly. bull charge move one of the, your abilities? Yeah, it's the uh, it's the top one. So um, if you if you hold right trigger, it, it you know activates those, and then it's the uh, the one on top. So you know we were, I was playing on Xbox here, it would have been maxed to the Y button. Uh, the high this wire act is. makes me nervous. I don't know. <laughs> No, you're not call, <laughs> it is <like> stressful. <laughs> Sorry, Jess, what were you going to say? Oh, uh, it's just about abilities in general. There's also um, the idea that you have to earn the abilities here, so you have to explore a lot of the environment in order to find them. In this case, of course, in the demo, we give you a couple fun ones, but typically you have to earn them yourself uh, through exploration. So Nice. You yeah, and yeah, well, we actually have some of that coming up uh, of, of how, how you actually go about earning abilities, but uh, this was actually a really cool little environmental challenge that I just you know stumbled upon in the world. 
um, I came across, there was something in this temple that was, you know, marked on my compass. Um, and I, when I went up to the, the front door, it was barred and I couldn't get in and there were no openings. Um, so I sort of climbed around and looked and I saw this, this, you know, exposed, uh, window brick area here. Um, and I realized if I, if, if I can bring out my predator bow and shoot the barricade, I can unlock the door. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and this was, there was no mission for this. Like it was just out in the world. Well, and also you had that handy note to be like, Hey, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe you should. <laughs> uh -oh. Dude, wearing a ghillie suit? Oh, these guys are, these guys are camos, camouflaging. <laughs> Avor's here, hello. Give me your stuff. <laughs> no doorbell, so you just have to go in. Thanks. <laughs> and we got the loot. Nice, well chest. Okay, so now I oh, see yeah, that, that was wealth collected, and I see the sort of wealth bar. So there's like wealth and raw materials. These are like different kind of types of resources you gather in each region. That's right, yeah. So where um, where raw materials come in is more for you know your settlement, for your people, for you to expand your renown. But when it comes to wealth, typically it's a bit more for Eivor uh, to find you know weapons or things to upgrade your gear. Um, and we, uh, through the exploration, we kind of show you the closest ones within the territory, and it's up to you to find them or not. You know, it's it's uh, the world is huge, and there's lots of things to find if you want to. Including two including shields. Two shields Chris. <laughs> That's the <laughs> this is the battle I've been waiting for. <laughs> yes. So I was actually really surprised at how effective this is, it just like damage wise. Uh, I mm. thought it would be like a really kind of like tanky loadout and like, you know, maybe do a lot of stun damage, but not necessarily take a lot of health away. But it's it's a totally viable loadout. <laughs> it's legit. I mean, if we let you do it, it can be legit. <laughs> Taking care of the two shield business. Uh, folks in the Twitch chat, we are checking in there for any questions y'all have. Uh, I saw some people asking about uh, PC specs, and so I'm going to throw a little link in there. Again, you can find this article on news.ubisoft.com if you want to get an idea of where Assassin's Creed Valhalla is going to, how it's going to run on your system, what your targets can be. Uh, go ahead and check that out. But, oh, sorry, I can't talk through one of these. Mm -mm, mm -mm. So, Jess, I mean, lo long-time viewers of our stream and Chris know very well that I'm a sucker for AC sync points. It's like my favorite mechanic in every any game ever. And each one, especially in a new AC, just gives me chills. Is it like the music? Is it the view? Like, is it the combination of everything? Like, what's the... What's the music swells so well with the view and, like, you just get to see the open expanse of the world and how big it is and how, how far you could travel if you wanted to. It's all... all of it. Thank you. It's so good. It's definitely the, the Assassin's Creed fantasy there, for sure. I have sparred against champions and best All right, we got our first example of flighting here. Oh, to beat such a bracket will surely be fun. Ah, quick to bite back. Ooh, okay, so that was the right honor. choice. But so give, what, 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 what is governing the choices here? Like, what's going to help you zing these guys a little better? There is um, some rules to flitting in general. So um, if I'm not mistaken, I'm no expert myself. I often end up failing, but it's about the nature of the of the the flitting. So if they're talking about you know intelligence, you don't want to start talking about you know simple-minded like uh, insults and also the pacing so trying to rhyme um so it's a combination of just trying to keep your the same pace appalling, but have a harsher response worse. um so yeah Don't that's how you can figure out that. whether or not you have it right i'm impressed mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. are as sharp as that axe on your belt shout out oh, to godrich the the person in the middle there who's just the like <laughs> essentially your barometer of, like how well you answer yeah but the total hype man like, <laughs> you know, little, like, cute jump in there that was like yeah <laughs> They can be super harsh too. Like if you don't get it, oh my god, they tell you. <laughs> it just reminds me of the uh, that super hot fire meme when like everyone's just like, oh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> super harsh. Yes. It's good to have you with us. To fight beside such legends is an honor. I've only heard tales of your conquests. Hey now. Oh, we also saw there the just at the end um, at the the completion of the fighting that our charisma went up. Well, what exactly is charisma? Like, what does that govern? 
Hammered on the right, so charisma to is earned uh, oh. mainly through flitting, Move. and essentially Come what it does is that it allows to unlock Fight's certain uh, dialogue right. options in a specific context. So, for example, sometimes Boy, you'd have, have the answer uh, yes, the answer no, and if you were quarters, to have enough charisma, uh, then maybe there'd be the answer of find a Time deal in the middle or something a bit Don't more uh, diplomatic or maybe something that might be more in your favor. Uh, so Can't if players do a lot of flitting, which can be found in local towns, and taverns, and stuff like that, uh, they'll be able to uh, use need... this charisma to their benefit to in context. These men are my oh, friends. awesome. My country. So it behooves you to do all your uh, your, your flitting challenges. You friend now. Yes. <laughs> you can thank your father for that. E uh, we have a question coming in, Jess, uh, from Healthy Cucumber in the Twitch chat, asking about weapons and armor. Uh, is that something we're gonna, like, when we're exploring, are we finding those in, like, chests in places? Do enemies drop them in combat? What's the best way to kind of, like, expand your arsenal? So, if you stick Look to the main path, these, meaning no exploration, rats. just quest by quest, you'll of course come across a couple beasts, weapons and a couple pieces. Uh, but ground. the best way to get the most diverse uh, spectrum of weapons is probably lobos. through exploration, mainly through uh, searching for wealth. What do we do um, about so, them? in each territory, we'll give you an approximate amount of well, It's actually pretty wolf. specific, sorry. We it's a specific amount of um, wealth that can be found. And within wealth, you can either find gear, weapons, or ingots that can be used to enhance a or a god um, so all that would be the armor. best route that I'd recommend. It's a also the most fun since you get to enjoy the environment. Um, but yeah, so it's a mix of both. Uh, but mainly, I would say wealth is the best way to go That's if you Bruges really want it. Killed a dozen of our nice. men in an ambush along the river. Trent. Hot tips already for you folks. <laughs> Getting ready <laughs> for tips the release. On exploration. <laughs> yeah. That is a poor description of a perfect thirty. So Chris, cross. we have we have the the two if sets of siblings here, crown, uh, Eivor Sigurd. Uba and uh, Ivar, and this is this is Burger, the current king of Mercia, with his uh, Warthane um, uh, uh, Leofric, and Leofric is sort of, sort of this formidable warrior that's like the last loyal uh, thane to, to the king, and uh, they basically approached peacefully and said, "Hey, like here's your chance." And he said, "Well, you gotta come take my crown, essentially." So we are now assaulting his fortress. Thank you for the invitation. We will happily oblige. <laughs> Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you're gonna make us go full Viking, we'll go full Viking. And I like this like uh like late sunset, like burning orange, light hour, like it seems like a auspicious hour for battle. I'm all romantic. <laughs> you know, it really covers up some of the blood. Just, it's the best time to, to assault. <laughs> the warm glow before, you know, imminent death. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. uh, ooh, that's one of my favorite finishers. So you can see we're dual wielding here, one handed axe in one hand and a hammer in, in, the, in the other. Um, so they don't need to be like the same exact weapon type or anything as long as they're both uh, one handed weapons. And yeah, the hammer just come, makes for brutal, brutal takedowns. The sound, too. The sound effect on the hammer. Oof, I love it. So good. That, that was one of my favorite abilities there, too. The harpoon throw, where you can you throw the harpoon into someone, and then you could throw them in a direction. Um, and if they hit another enemy, it will chunk both of their health. Yes. Yeah, any optical, ideally a person, then it would deal damage to both. But yeah, anytime you make it hit something, um, it's pretty critical damage, for sure. Something other than people? What do you really uh, Walls, obstacles, oh, okay. boxes. Oh. <laughs> Ideally not yourself, but maybe. <laughs> Ideally well, not maybe, maybe some uh, mythical creatures. <laughs> hey, why not? <laughs> <laughs> you done it. You done it. Ooh. White Yongi saying block, please. Uh, I never block. All right. That's, that's just how I <laughs> I would if you want heavy so block, you want strategic blocking gameplay, you came to the wrong place. We are, just a reminder folks, this is pre-recorded gameplay from a work in progress build. Uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is coming out next month, November 10th. Uh, and we're just giving you a little preview look here at, uh, at some more gameplay and some of the characters you're going to be able to associate with. Whether you like it or not. See what you just kidding. Find. Ivar's cool. We're, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm over the torture thing. Tell him we found the <laughs> We like him now. <laughs> Ivar makes a quick a quick beeline to that throne there. 
Oh yeah, for sure. Who wouldn't want to sit uh, on a true. throne? I mean, look, if you roll up that's in a place fair. and there's a throne, you want to sit there. Mm -hmm. Just like if you roll up to a place and there's a dog, you want to pet it! He puts his paw on you! The dog has such a big fuzzy neck. So what happened there, Chris, is that we we rolled up uh, into into uh, Burgard's throne room and realized he's not there. So he's he's somewhere missing. Uh, we got to go find out where he could be. But before we do that, uh, I, I headed back to Raventhorpe, which is our, our settlement. Oh, you're gonna customize and, the look? Oh yeah, you can head to the barber and tattoo shop, Chris. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, we customize our tattoos. Okay, getting a look at a few of them here. I like it. I like it. Jormungandr. We have some folks, uh, some some For Honor fans in the chat. Recognize that <laughs> name. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, you can also change the hair, the hair color as well. And so this is customizing both, you know, and new we're, we're obviously seeing... Uh, Eivor as a woman here, but Eivor is also, can, can play as a man, and they're totally, it's not like similar to Odyssey in that they are different characters. They're the same character. You can switch uh, during your adventure if you want to mix it up. Is that correct, Jess? Yeah. Oh, 100%. You can change um, nearly at any time um, during the game if you want to. We have three options. We have uh, fully male, fully female, or let the animus decide. Oh, okay. Wait, so the, uh, like does the that. Animus decide, will it stick with one, or will it kind of, like, mix it up? I believe the description uh, that we give so far is that it takes the stream, uh, the memory stream, or the data stream that is strongest at that time. Um, oh, okay. And it is the default uh, selection. But, of course, if you have a really strong preference, uh, by all means, both are totally valid choices. To cool. To fight with us. Which reminds me. A few of your raiders are chomping at the bit in hope of becoming your second. You ought to pick one. You so just we have this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna tee this up because this is something called the Yom's Viking. Um, mm -hmm. And I basically talked to this woman outside of this, the barracks, and she said there's a bunch of people who want to be my second, uh, who want to be my lieutenant, and this is where I, I get to sort of customize that. Um, but That's what right. exactly is, is this person? What do they do for you, Jess? Mm -hmm. So a Yams Viking uh, is a raider that is sworn to you uh, and essentially will always be on your ship. You can choose their appearance and change their gender and once you lock that in, that is the character that is now your Yams Viking. However, uh, it's also a great opportunity for you to equip, you know, really amazing loot on them, make them look amazing. And uh, once you know the game is launched, you'll be able to share your Yams Viking. So once you're, let's say you're not in the settlement or you're not raiding actively, your friends can actually take your Yams Viking with them. And if they do raids with their, your friends, they can come back and give you a bounty so or loot Ooh. from that. So, uh, so that's what a Yams Viking is. Um, I personally like to put my finest gear on them and have my friends have uh, play with them. So that's the best route. <laughs> Yusuf, you better not be sending no scrub-looking Yums Viking over to my ship. <laughs> not having it. Oh, no, no. Trust me, Chris. Alvor Mushroom Eater is only the finest warrior around. <laughs> Put them in, like, the default clothing you get at the first, <laughs> in the first part of the game. Just rags. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I love that. <laughs> you know, it's good to be enthusiastic about things and have hobbies, Chris, and I'm just glad that Alvor, you know, has a passion. And that's his mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> what level do you have to get at with how much you love mushrooms to have people refer to you so as to your nickname. <laughs> mushroom eater? Damn. <laughs> Order, look. Join me. Let us begin. All right, Chris. This was probably like this is one of the moments in the, the the demo that totally caught me off guard. How invested in how much time I spent playing Orlog, which is this dice game. Um, and just do, do you want to give a brief? intro about what Orlog is and how it works? Sure, sure. So Orlog is our dice game found, uh, you can find it in some cities, sometimes next to like um, uh, where your team's set up and it's a great opportunity for you to relax and play a game of dice. And so the point of the game is to deplete 
the uh, health of the other uh, player. In this instance, it'll be uh, the kind of gems. And in order to do that, you can roll dice, and the dice have faces offensive or defensive. And uh, there's also uh, another factor, which is god favors. Um, so those are the kind of... Um, statues that you see on the side there and uh, they'll be able to be summoned through what we just saw now uh, which are uh, favors and if you have enough you can uh, summon powers so that's the basics of it uh, you can earn god favors as you go and you can select them as well um, it's really fun and uh, it's a great place to like mix and match uh, or com uh, combine different abilities I like yeah, it. I got absolutely addicted to this. Um, I really? played like oh, three different matches. I, I had to remind myself of like, wait, no, this is not the game. This is, this is just part of the game. Um, I am Avor. Yeah. I am Avor. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, folks, but yeah, you're seeing like out. arrows, you're seeing hands, you see like axes, helmets, shields. And so mm -hmm. uh, arrows, well, arrows and axes attack the opponent's like remaining uh, health. And then um, shields and helmets block each one of those respective ones. And then the little hand gesture will actually steal gold from your opponent. Um, and any any faces that come up with a gold outline will gain you gold. And then gold you can That's spend right. on god, god powers, um, which are represented by those little totems you see to the right of my dish. Um, mm. In this case, yeah, let's deal. I can spend gold to deal five damage. Mm -hmm. Folks, while we're watching the, what's it called? O ogre? O o Orlog. Orlog. <laughs> while we're watching the Orlog game play ogre. out. Uh, ogre. <laughs> uh, quick reminder that what we're what you're seeing right now is captured from a PC work in progress version of Assassin's well, Creed Valhalla. The gameplay ah, is pre-recorded and we've edited it together for time to show off as many different things as we can during our live stream. We are live and uh, chatting about what we see on screen and also trying to take questions occasionally. So go ahead and throw in a question in the chat we've also got Yubi Gabe in the chat shout out to him answering questions uh, from the Assassin's Creed community development team uh, super glad to have you joining us so keep an eye out for those questions and uh, we'll try to answer the ones that we can uh, as we explore and keep you updated on what you're seeing here and uh, descend into a dark place filled with spiders and rats my favorite <laughs> absolute favorite <laughs> so cozy Oh, so, so there's a big old shiny glowing thing here, um, Jess, and can you tell us exactly what this is? Right, so those are books of knowledge, which can also be found via wealth. I forgot to mention that earlier, how could I? But uh, they are part of the wealth, and uh, essentially you have to find the way to get to it. And once you do get that book of knowledge, you'll be able uh, to either unlock a new ability, uh, or you'll be able to upgrade an ability if it's the second time you find that same book of knowledge within the world. So that's what we're looking for right now. So are, are these like consistent uh, like places? Like it, you know, this this book of knowledge there that I'm finding here that's going to give me a certain ability. Uh, will that be the same for everyone, or will that be uh, like this is the place you go to find harpoon and failment? Is that it? Uh, yes, I believe they're fixed. So um, they are all set in certain areas of the world. So you'll have to explore to find all of them. But no, they're not random. Very cool. I like that. All right, Jess, I got a so, few yeah. rapid fire questions I want to throw at you here while we look at these melee rapid abilities. Fire. Okay. Uh, okay. Wing, Wing Slap wants to know, does the weather affect your ability for stealth gameplay? I mm -hmm. don't believe so. Not my area of expertise personally, but okay. I don't believe so. If I'm wrong, I hope uh, <laughs> Anouk or the HR team can correct me, but pretty sure no. Well, no wonder you got the nickname, man. Mushroom Eater. What's this seal doing? <laughs> Wait a minute. Sorry, I, you know questions what? on hold. We're in a hallucination <laughs> challenge? How more recommended that I try out some of these local mushrooms? And uh, let me tell you, it, it was an interesting time. It gave me this hallucination challenge. Uh, suddenly there were seals on the ground and gates surrounding me. Sure, sure. Seems natural. Yeah, yeah and it's totally. a, it, it turned out to be a little bit of a puzzle where I had to figure out kind of what to do uh, and then I, I realized that there was one very helpful seal that was uh, directing me to the proper gate. And uh, when I when I walk through it, it turns white. And so I have to uh, I have to enter the gates in the proper order. Uh, question from Dagar is asking about mounts. Are there mounts? Uh, can you mount this seal? Can you ride this? Seal? <laughs> <laughs> Not to my knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like if you, only. But you get horses. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. you can get horses. Uh, I 
mostly horses. I think we have a couple surprises in there, but um, Ooh, let's okay. assume horses. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, folks are curious about the, the map size compared to Odyssey. This one's quite sizable compared to it, right? I'm not an expert when it comes to comparing map sizes, unfortunately. It, it is vast, and we have a couple uh, environments also um, to be explored. We also have, you know, Norway initially. So if we count that all together, I would say it's, you know, comparable. It's a very big environment. Excellent. Yusuf, you completed the mystery. We are no longer uh, hallucinating on random woodland mushrooms. <laughs> ah, fly agar. <laughs> Oh, this this is what I thought was one of the more sort of like humorous side quests first. Um, and it's it's you know kind of revealing the origin of one of our you know a, a very well uh, loved culinary uh, ingredient. Oh please, I'm irritated enough already. The last thing I need is someone lying to my face. It is a something that's a bit harder to pronounce. Take it. What are you brewing anyway? I call it Leicestershire sauce. That is a mouthful. <laughs> what is wrong with it? It doesn't come close to meriting such a sizable name. That's what's wrong with it. And I've tried. Lord, have I tried. But I cannot, for the life of me, strike the perfect balance. It's tough out here, man. I should just give up. As I look around, that is hard to argue. <laughs> you wouldn't happen Oof. to be carrying an eel, would you? <laughs> Not the first thing I grab when I set off for the day. No. I've fished everything in Leicester, but the eel. And you think this elusive river snake could be the answer to your sauce woes? There's only one way to know for sure. All right, if I wrangle one, I shall bring it to you. Yes, Chris, tell me about your sauce woes. And you Try. think this elusive <laughs> river snake? Thank you. <laughs> All your sauce woes. <laughs> All right, Yusuf, time to solve some oh, sauce woes. Oh yeah, and uh, it starts with fishing. So we headed out to the, river the, the river nearby, uh, trying to catch an eel. All right, while you're eel fishing, Haddon Jedi wants to know, I've never played an AC game before. What do I have to understand, have to know to understand what's happening here? And Yusuf, Ooh. I'm curious, because you've played a ton of AC games before as well. What's your take on this? I have. Game? Yeah, I've played uh, basically every AC game. Um, so my like, there's never a bad time to jump into Assassin's Creed. Um, you can jump into any entry that, that interests you. Valhalla is going to be the, your, your first. You can totally do that as well. Um, each sort of historical uh, story would, um, is, is, you know, essentially uh, stands on its own. It's the, the modern day story is, is what um, is, is persistent throughout the games. Um, and it's, uh, you know, th that's, that's easy enough to, to catch up on, or, uh, I think the dev teams do really good jobs of, of sort of catching players up on, uh, on what they may have missed in the past. So yeah, never a bad time to jump in. Mm -hmm. mm. Totally agreed. So wait, you have got so a eel? You're, you're swinging we, the sauce? We gave the eel. Not quite there. Needs oh, more eel. Lord. <laughs> Sauce woes persist. I've had worse. I suppose that's it then. It's over. Time for me to pack up my things and see what the fruits of another kingdom might offer me. Where will you go? Worcester, I think. Though I'll be honored uh. if I'm going to name my sauce after that paltry place. <sighs> Thank you for all your help. <laughs> I don't know many days, Listen, and I don't this is the thing I like to, about Assassin's Creed is, like, to this uh, in many if ways, it, th it tells these epic tales you, and has these, like, characters that are so, like, involved and moving in these stories that make you feel like a friggin' Farewell. hero. Be with you. But they're also fun and funny, and you get to meet characters who are trying to brew up sauce. Like, it just, it, like, <laughs> makes that world feel so much more rich and interesting to explore. I love it. I also like that I... I now have a better idea of how to pronounce that sauce because I don't know about you, Chris. Every anytime I see it, I just always kind of just mumble my way through it or just say it really fast. Worcestershire sauce, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but now I'm just gonna be like, oh, it's Worcestershire sauce. I think we can say Worcestershire. What have you seen? I don't know. That's a that's a northeast thing, all right. That is true. That's a, that's a New England vibes right there coming out. Uh, all right. What is happening in... Well, actually, first, folks, I see a bunch of people asking sort of about deeper uh, story stuff, about present-day uh, stuff. 
Uh, we're not really touching on that much during this stream. We're focusing more on the different no. gameplay segments we're the showing off. But I'm going to put this in chat uh, and sorry to be talking over this. Look in chat for a link on more kids. story stuff. <laughs> Thanks to my brother, now we are into making them. I'm going to talk no about... No small tension between you two. Mm -hmm. Thought you'd mm -hmm. be more like-minded. You and Sigurd, you always see eye to eye? More often than not. You are still young. You live to my age and you will see. The closer you get, the greater the stink that rises. Yeah. When he says closer to my age, he means like 28, scout, right? That's old when you're a Viking. <laughs> yeah, <Give> definitely. <laughs> Eivor is actually 14. Stay here and for your scouts. I'm going in. They, they grow beards very early. Listen, man, you get out on them raids, you grow up real quick. Uh, so what's <laughs> happening here? We're about to, uh, I presume you're going to jump off of this. And if you don't, I will end the stream right now. Okay, good. Uh. <laughs> so uh, we, when we finished that assault, we saw that, that Burgrid was nowhere to be found. And so um, we he's gone missing. And we have a few leads on where he might be. So Ivar has sent in the scout gear to, uh, into the city, the town of Lichester. Um, and we're we're gonna go investigate, um, you know, what the scouts found, or you know, we don't know where the scout is right now. Maybe they they've been caught. Maybe they're uh, they're you know stuck somewhere. So we have to go uh, investigate. But it's stealthy time now. We got the hood up and everything, uh, moving through. And now, you know, this the hood obviously hey, is not like total total hiding. Uh, you, you see the guard sort of alert things, queuing up there or not. But you managed to make it to the bench to. Oh blend yeah, we're blending right. in the bench. And Jess, I want to ask you, because this is a, a new mechanic uh, to Assassin's Creed, you know, I think longtime fans are used to seeing, the, you know, that this is a hostile area and that, you know, that red bar underneath the compass, but this is a distrust area. Um, what That's exactly right. does that mean, as opposed to a restricted area, which we see now? So distrust areas uh, don't attack you on sight necessarily. If you keep a certain distance from guards or from um, uh, authoritative figures of that location, they won't attack you right away. They might even like ask you to back off. Um, but if you break that or if you stay too long, they'll start attacking on sight. So these are usually the best places to uh, wear cloaks or to use you know stealth mechanics for sure. Oh, or, you know, just kill them. Option B. <laughs> Always option B. Yeah, that's your <laughs> No problem. Aerial assassinate. <laughs> Gotta do it. Gotta do it. It's so good. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, here comes some more. Pulling out the bow. Oh, nice shot. Nice. Thank you, thank you. I like it. <laughs> Uh, now, did you have fun with these dual axes, Yusuf? Uh, what do you think? Yeah, the dual axes to me was, uh, I mean, I didn't have a weapon, there wasn't a weapon combo I didn't enjoy. Uh, the dual axes definitely seemed like a very high damage output build, though, um, and uh, felt felt very Viking-ish, if, if I must admit. Jess, what's your vibe? What do you like to, do you have a weapon preference? Do you have a style preference when you go into combat? Um, it's hard to say. Typically, I revolve around like a two-handed axe, like a big axe. Those are kind of my favorite. Um, but what's cool with our, uh, with the game in general is if you hold, um, what is it? Is it right, it's right bumper or trigger? I forget what we call the ability. Sorry about that. But essentially, the combination will do a special attack, and the special attacks vary on the weapons that you're equipped. Uh, there's some also for solo weapons, so I really like the one for uh, two-handed axe. But uh, hammers are also my second choice. She's in template block. Nice. You she like the, the heavy hitters. <laughs> yep. Yep. Before someone comes looking for these men. So Chris, we we broke in and we found out who Ivar's um, queen to find a uh, king scout was, and it turns out to be Cheo Burke, who's Cheo Wolf, the king we're hoping to install son. Uh, and he, he was kind of trying to prove himself. He's not very uh, battle hardened at all. And so he kind of went out on a limb here and put himself in a dangerous position to uh, to try to scout out Burgard's location. And uh, we, we kind of had to bail him out of it. Uh, but now we have a new tip um, on where the queen uh, actually is, Burgard's wife. Um, and we, you know, the theory is that if we can find her, she can maybe tip us off to where Burgard is. Scouring the Shire in search of a king. Okay. I thought there was going to be like some light abduction happening here, but no, you're just going to try to, you're just going to go talk to her. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure uh, there you know, don't, yeah. don't, you know, count out any light abductions yet, Chris. <laughs> uh, 
so we said passive, passive takeover. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. As am I. It's uh, non-violent. <laughs> no. <laughs> non-violent may have been a strong word. <laughs> Maybe, uh, you know, force is... Uh... Deceitful. <laughs> sure. Alexis yeah. Dupree in the Twitch chat is asking, can I play this game just using a bow? I did that in Odyssey and loved it. What do you think? I don't, I don't see why not. Uh, from my experience, you know, there's going to be some obstacles. I think there's a couple of bosses also that warrant hand-to-hand uh, -hand so combat. Strange. We might have some events also where it's like fist fighting. Like don't bring a bow to a fist fight. That's not a thing. <laughs> but you know, don't do it. <laughs> um, but in general, I would say I think it's pretty viable, and the skill tree also allows you to have certain abilities or uh, skills, and you know, I think yeah, for sure. Now, when we're looking at this, is something I noticed before, but when you're looking at these enemies, we see some glowing, like an element of their ar their arsenal is glowing. Is that a way to sort of like communicate what kind of enemies you're facing? It certainly is, helps that, yes, once you use uh, an ability to see your surroundings, it'll highlight either uh, weak points, it'll highlight their weapons, so it gives you at least an idea as to what you're jumping into. <laughs> Which can be really important. There's so many archetypes. You don't want to run into, what was it, the Goliath <laughs> too often yeah. without knowing. <laughs> yeah, surprise Goliath. Nobody likes that. No. <laughs> yeah, knowing what kind of fight you're in for is, is definitely a good thing to, uh, to have ahead of time. And uh, the way you do that this time around, right, Jess, is, is with Odin Sight, uh, not necessarily with right. scouting with your, your eagle or your raven, right? Right. Uh, definitely for mid to close uh, scouting. The Odin site is your go-to. Uh, it pulses also, you know, everything that's uh, related to exploration. So chests that are nearby. It also reveals what kind of wealth it is from a distance. Um, so it really tells you a lot of information, both for combat and for exploration purposes. Um, I definitely recommend that. Raven is mostly to scout out far locations, see what you're dealing with, you know, in terms of a territory, in terms of um, how big a castle can be, or finding entrances to caves. Nice. Do not mind me. Oh. Only here to count my spoils. <laughs> this dude just shows up with I love, an I love this scene. <laughs> oh, still trying. Ivar, what the heck, man? The pigs are there too? Oh, so we're interrogating Aylesworth here, lady. essentially about where her husband is, and Ivar comes in with, with kind of a power move, kind of a, a negotiation kind tactic. Of. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell this dude my secrets already. Ooh. Just make him stop with the pigs and the heads. My my god! Yeesh. Get me out of here! Please! Talk now, and we'll draw you a nice warm bath. You... <laughs> you are asking me to betray my husband. How can I do that? If you don't, you will betray countless others. In legend, you may be remembered as the king and queen who abandoned their kingdom in its darkest hour. Oh, dang. But there will be peace. This is Cheol's promise, and it will be honored. You have my word. Talk about putting that lady in a tough position, but hey, it was effective, oh, yeah. and you didn't have to like, you know, break out the dual shields. No, only three <laughs> people needed to be beheaded, Chris. I mean, it's a win. It's a net win. <laughs> net win. <laughs> oh, so, uh, what an assault! Her information tipped us off that uh, Burgrid is in a uh, is down in here in this crypt, hiding out. Uh, so we're going to infiltrate it and to uh, try to try to find him. Wow, really disposing of the body very quickly there. I like that. Instant, cre Instant cremation. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, R.I.P. All right, so down into the crypt on the trail of the king. Uh, this is just like doing a little swimming, doing a little looting. Let me see if we can get another uh, Oh, yeah, there's some solution. wealth down there, Chris. Got to get that wealth, baby. All right. Uh, AD Cogs is asking about the HUD possibility, and like, yes, you could, there's a lot of HUD cost customization available. Uh, if you check out that article I posted earlier, it's an article on news.ubisoft.com about accessibility. It has a ton of information about different customization options. I'll put it in the Twitch chat or just find it on news.ubisoft.com. Are you going to go right. for that? So we got a new weapon, Chris. Like, oh, yeah. I gotta check out the Fjord Spear. Increase speed when dodging. All right, all right. Work on the range. I like the spear because it just keeps them keeps them a little bit away. You can poke mm -hmm. them. Hey, hey, wait. 
Oh. No, you don't. All right, so we're seeing a little. Was that a little bit of a hidden blade in action there? Except that it, since it's a little bit trickier, you won't be able to one shot him at this point. Yeah, the skir the we're 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 tangling with some tougher foes. Uh, is it the situation where the hidden blade you kind of upgrade it over time, or you as you level up it gets more powerful? Um, I think it's abilities mostly in the skill tree that will be able to enhance it. It's it's more about the difficulty of the enemy versus your own. Um, and uh, we give some options in order to enhance that. I think the previous demo also showed it. Um, you can have a chance to one shot uh, based off of a, a mini game uh, is one of the examples we have for the uh, hidden blade. Different ways you can implement that. No, no, right. no, he can't you be. found your guy. Stay back. Oh, yes. That's a bread knife, my lord. Do you mean to butter me? <laughs> Stay back. Back, I say! I'll fight you! If you insist. That's the last oh, thing you want to hear when you threaten to fight someone. To <laughs> if you Luckily insist. You, don't come to that. So just like you said, like this is this is a fight that you couldn't use a bow in, because again, we have to take you have to take Burger alive, so uh he's coming at Avor with a sword and shield, and Avor's just uh handling him with, with, with back. the fist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh some folks in chat noticed this earlier, uh, but I liked that move when you were just before you got in here, you like shot a dude in the knee because it was the weak spot and that opened up that stun attack. Jess, talk to me about this. Are, do, do enemies have weak spots to present themselves? Is this something you kind of you kind of open up as you're fighting? Right. Yes. So enemies do have weak spots, especially with the the bow is something you can uh, aim with. And once you get the weak spots, it'll uh, reduce the defense bar significantly. And if that bar is completely reduced, you'll get to do a stun attack afterwards. There's a couple of variations of this that come also with the main skills uh, in the skill tree, go, uh, but that's, you know, the basic of it, and then after that it builds upon itself uh, as you play. Nice. Well, you got a package Yeah, now. and Chris, I really like using the light bow for that, because it, it really allows you to fire off shots quick, and, Super you know, quick, yeah. it can be, yeah, like, it can be great for nailing those, those weak spots. I beg of you, please, I'll go anywhere, here, I'll I, I, I resign it, here. Take this lord there you go. and his wife to Rome. He is hereby exiled, never to return. Doesn't sound so bad, Rome. <laughs> I mean, Rome in the ninth century isn't uh, isn't the Rome uh, you know you, you know so well from other things, Chris. <laughs> this isn't Ezio Ezio era Rome. No. God save the king. Or even you know Aya and Bayek era Rome. <laughs> Mercy and soldiers marching on God, I'm saying man got a free ride to Rome. There you go. Loyal to the ugly <laughs> end, bastard. Gather what men you have and split them between the north and south gates. That should divide his forces. Ooh, they're not there. giving up, huh? Evo, you must save my son. He will come through this, I promise. I will stay here with Chiu. Go. I feel like Eivor is making a lot of promises. So yeah, uh, Leofric, the that the the war thane, the uh, formidable warrior that was uh, that was loyal to Burger, has has attacked and um, you know marsh uh, you know Marshal sort of a last ditch effort uh, against against Abor's homies here, and so we gotta go we gotta go handle it and uh, save save Chewolf's son as well. Handled. Also rocking that big axe. This one's for you, Jess. My favorite. <laughs> this axe was super cool. I came across it, and there was actually a little note saying that it was actually built uh, or it was made for Leo Fritsch. Uh And so, and then like we kind of we kind of stole it. Um, but it has an ability where anytime you critical strike, like you just saw there, it lights on fire. It's on fire. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I, don't. I love when our writers leave like fragments of information. There's some all over the environment, and since I touched less than that in my day to day, I find them too, and I'm like, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, that's fun to like discover things about the game you worked on, because so many other people doing so many different things on it. Uh, cool course. to cool to learn that stuff as you play. Mm -hmm. All right, light, light, fire, and destruction around here. Gonna need some infrastructure rebuilding once you've got the new king uh, installed. Right. But now you're taking to, uh, you're on the trail of Colbert, Chilbert. Leo Fritsch. Leo Fritsch and yes. Chilbert. Yeah, uh, yeah. Chilbert. Chilbert. I need your eyes. We gotta get the, gotta get them down. 
Oh, what's up, Raven? Chris, I expect you to come correct with these Anglo-Saxon pronunciations. Man, don't worry, I'll get there. <laughs> you got until launch day, Chris. That's <laughs> until what I, launch that's, day. That's... Oh yeah. That's All less right. than thirty days. All right, I'll study up. Please, I'll study up. No you problem. You do not want to do this, Leofred. Let him walk. You answer to me. I answer to my king. Our silence deeds with this. Ooh, he's not having it. Mm -hmm. Lay it by, Leofren. There's nothing left to fight for. We've stormed Repton. Only a matter of time. Abor is throwing out the olive branch. I cannot do that. I like it. Then you will die. Someone will. Someone. Yeah, he's trying. He's like, Look, man, we can throw down, but can't why? <laughs> Ooh. Okay, that's that harpoon we're talking about. <laughs> oh man. That's so good. There was also something like kind of mean to me about this of like defeating Leofrish with the weapon that was originally made for him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's defending a king that's now fled to Rome. So and he has no idea. That was right. a big bite. That was a big bite. That stun attack. Yeah, so he ha he has weak points too uh, that you can exploit with the bow. Wow, that axe is really heavy impact. Uh, looks like he's gonna do something. He's gonna do something to you. Watch out, Yusuf. I believe in you, even though you're not playing this live right now. <laughs> and we probably wouldn't be showing you. it if you lost Passed this fight. Have to, I'm sure you did great. <laughs> there we go. Oh, Leofrich. Go on, then. End it. What's the move? No appeal to your god. What did you choose? Or your king. So yeah, you got a choice here. Mm -hmm. Chat, what would you choose? I'm Yusuf has already made the choice. This is pre-recorded footage off a of work in progress build, but what choice will you make? Hmm. Hmm. says says <gasps> cool. <You've gasps> well, oh, you did? Oh, yes. You will go to your God as Spoilers, you are. we show you both choices. <laughs> oh, okay. This is the choice I made, though. Name one now. I have never done that choice. Not once. Not once. Really? You gave him the warrior's death? Can't do it. Oh, yeah. Well, Eva even has, you know, somewhat, you know, nice parting words. For he, does. he does. It aligns also with Eivor's values. You know, you die as a warrior or a drenger, which is what he had dubbed him. So it, it makes sense. It's just... Can't do it. <laughs> Alright, so now so here you see the option of sparing him. Yeah, yeah. Man seconds from death. What would I gain? He saved himself and left you to die. All this fighting, it's for nothing. For no How one. How does he take it? I wonder. To betray one so trusted, so close. It's a dishonor worth a thousand deaths. Eivor. You have shown me a great kindness. It is only fitting that I do the same. At Venonis. There is a statue with a scroll laid in a small bowl. You must burn it. A scroll? Your name is on this scroll. At Burgred's request, I put it there. When it is found, the zealots who read it will hunt you. Who are they? It doesn't matter now. You haven't much time. Burn the scroll, or they will never stop hunting you. Where will you go now? Rome. Uh-oh, Bergy. <laughs> <laughs> Less passive now. Oh, yes. Come on. Let's take you back. Take this, wolf kissed. So, Jess, we got a little bit of a mention there of zealots. Uh, what, can you tell us a little bit about who they are? You honor me. I like the mystery that was kept in the demo, so I won't go too deep in them, but they, it okay. is indeed a big thing to have a zealot after you. Uh, they're really strong archetypes, uh, very good fighters, uh, and typically they are they have a, a code or an alliance they follow. Um, so there is a common mindset to them. You can find them roaming around, sometimes defending uh, people, sometimes defending towns. Um, and at launch, you'll get to know much more about what they do in the world. But the fact that he gave 
gave you that hint uh, is a pretty big move on his part. He must really appreciate you. Saved his okay, life. so he's doing us a favor here. Oh, definitely, 100%. <laughs> is well, it nap Chris, time? This is about, this is nap time. This is it's time for us to go to bed. Abel had a long day of making kings. Uh, I think <laughs> does not remove rest. armor. <laughs> so tired from battle. I can see that. I mean, but uh, now your, your pelts are getting all bloody and viscera-y. Listen, I, I don't know, man. I'm not a Viking. But I will be in a video game. You will be on November 10th, Chris, when Assassin's Creed Valhalla comes out on Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S, Xbox One, PS4, PC, Stadia, and Luna, and on November 12th, coming to PlayStation 5 as well. Boom. Uh, and we're just wrapping it up here with some, uh, with some fishing. You know, just a nice little peaceful, uh, relaxing activity. Uh, but folks, that brings us to the end. I did, I did. I want some more of that Leicestershire. Lesser... Oh, see, now, now I'm screwing it up. <laughs> Let it test the shire sauce. Woes. Oh, there we sauce go. Woes. Sauce woes. My poor sauce woes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Jess, thank you so much for, for joining us. Uh, and folks, thanks so much for watching. Absolutely. This was a real treat. To get a look at some pre-recorded gameplay of Valhalla. So, so you folks saw a lot of different elements of the game in play there from combat to dice throwing to maneuvering for alliances to flighting to uh, eel problems. It's pretty great. <laughs> uh, Jess, what are you most excited for when Valhalla comes out? Oh my gosh, so much. Uh, mm -hmm, it's it's mm -hmm, crazy. Mm -hmm, There's mm -hmm. so many things to say, but in general, it's just for you guys to get that wow moment when you enter that world. It's so breathtaking and Eivor is so captivating as a main character. So I'm really excited for people to step in the like in the very heavy footsteps of Eivor and uh, go through their journey. Um, there's just so much. I'm so excited. Sounds great. Well, congrats for all your hard work on the game. Uh, we're definitely looking forward to checking it out. Folks, go ahead and subscribe to the channel or follow the channel here if you want to see more streams of upcoming Ubisoft games. We stream every Wednesday and Friday with the release of Watch Dogs Legion and Assassin's Creed Valhalla coming up very soon. You can bet you'll be seeing more of those games as well as more goodness from other Ubisoft games, giveaways, etc., etc. We're here for you. We like to stream. It's a good time. Thanks so much for tuning in. That's a wrap. Have a great